Hello, my name is Tamara Casey and I'm the designer at Designs by Jude and the owner of the Fletcher Pattern Company. I'm super glad you're here today and I welcome you to my sewing room. I also want to let you know that we have a special guest, Grace Marie Fitzpatrick, who is modeling for us Noteworthy Style. Noteworthy Style is a pattern that was created in sponsorship for the Virtual Doll Convention Club Grace subscription for March. Rachel and I thought it might be fun if the Virgil Doll Convention attendees could have an opportunity to see a step-by-step -step sewing demonstration of how this ensemble was created. So I hope you come along and see if there's some tips and tricks that might help you create your own one-of-a-kind creation. And when you do, please make sure you post lots of pictures and videos so that we can follow your creations as well. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great convention. Go ahead and get started. I already decided that I'm going to make this outfit out of an upcycled um, wool blend jacket that I found at a local thrift store. I love the color, um, so I thought Grace would love it as well. So this is fuchsia. What I did uh, before I started the video is I did cut the pattern pieces out and I did lay them out. Um, I already cut the lining out, so I'm just going to show you basically how you would lay the pattern out on the main fabric and then you would do the exact same thing on the lining fabric, noticing that the only piece that you don't use lining for is the facing of the jacket collar, which is cut out of the same material. So I've just pinned it, I'm going to cut it out quickly and then tell you how we would proceed from there. Cutting it out will probably be the most exciting part of the whole uh, process. As we're cutting it out, I just like to tell you that I'm really excited to be here. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think that's okay. Uh, I know that everybody's coming from a different place when sewing. Some people are experts, better than I. Other people are just getting started, and so it can be kind of intimidating. This video is designed actually just to try to take some of that uh, guesswork out of the instructions if you're not familiar with reading them and just showing you my approach to sewing this particular pattern. Now keep in mind uh, this isn't the only way. There's tons of ways just like there is in cooking. Uh, everybody has their own style and their own flair. We've all been taught by different people. Some people are professionally trained um, and, and, and there's a place for everyone to start so that's kind of the exciting part. Um, I really enjoy making patterns. I've been doing it uh, since about 2005. Uh, the first one I literally drew on a piece of paper and then just kept trying to sew it and sew it uh, until I got what I thought was kind of a reasonably good fit. I doubt it was the best pattern that I ever made but it kind of got me started to where I am today. So um, think about where you are in your process and what you'd like to learn. I totally would direct you to different YouTube videos and used to be would direct you to books, but now you can find exactly what you're looking for uh, a lot quicker by just searching the internet. So I'm going to continue to cut these pieces out just as I'm showing here, and then I'll show you what I've already done with the lining pieces in preparation. So we have our pattern cut out and the lining cut out as well. I quickly wanted to review the pieces that are included in the pattern. For the jacket, we have the jacket back in lining, the jacket sleeve front and lining, the jacket sleeve back in lining, uh, the jacket front, and then the jacket facing cut out of the same material. Since we're going to start the construction of the outfit with the dress, I'm going to take the jacket pieces and just put them to the side for now. The next step that I do in the process is decide if I need to mark anything on the pattern before I start to sew. And in this case, there are some darts and also a center back seam in the dress that does need to be marked. Um, what I like to use, and there are several methods, is I like to use a heat sensitive pen. What I generally do to start is I take a seam ripper and where the darts stop, and start or where a seam would stop and start, I just put a small hole in it with my seam ripper. Then uh, right with the wrong side of the fabric up, I just lay the pattern piece on to the fabric. And then I just press the um, heat sensitive pen through those dots. And then I make sure that I can see the dots clearly on the pattern piece. 
You know, some people are not a fan of these markers because they have a reputation for coming back if the weather tends to be very cool. I haven't had that experience so far so good with that. If you need an alternative way to mark your pattern, you can also use one of these water soluble markers uh, available in white if you're using a darker fabric, which is another nice alternative. So I'm gonna do that same process um, with the back of the pattern, again with the wrong side of the fabric up. I'm going to just lay the pattern piece over the fabric, press the ink marker through the dots that I created, and we should be just about ready to start sewing. Okay, so I previously did it on the lining pieces. You may be able to see it with the camera. Um, they're already marked as well. So this should keep me from having to stop, hunt for my pattern piece, and then uh, look for a way to mark the darts. So from here, we'll take it to the sewing machine. I'm gonna start with the front section of the dress and sew the darts both at the neckline and at the front of the dress. I like to start with the body darts before I do the neckline. My method for doing this generally is to take a nice straight pin and put it at the beginning of the dart as well as the end of the dart. If you look on the pattern, you'll notice that the largest width is literally about a quarter of an inch right at the major center of the waist. So I start the dart very narrow and then I bring it out to about a quarter of an inch width at the waist and then I bring it back in narrow at the bottom of the dart. So there are obviously other ways to do a dart and you may have learned it a different way and you want to do whatever you feel comfortable with. But if you're just getting started, this isn't a bad method. You can also mark the dart completely on the pattern piece. I use a stitch width of about two and a half to three. I start at the top of the dart and like I said, I just sew very carefully in towards that quarter of an inch, which I mark with the side of my um, sewing foot. I do a small turn in the center of the dart, and then I go right back to a thinner point at the base of the dart, carefully not hitting that pin as I go. I leave the uh, strings very long on the dart so that I can tie those off after I finish uh, sewing all the darts into the fabric. So again, I take the straight pins, pushing it in at the base and the top of the dart. I fold the fabric in half. I check that the hemline is lined up uh, and that I don't lose my string because my sewing machine likes to take the string out of the needle, uh, starting at the top of the dart again, carefully not hitting the dart. I sew into the middle, quarter inch at the width at the waist of the um, dress and then turn it out and carefully making it narrow down to the pin again. Don't hit the pin. Okay, so I have the first two darts on the front of the dress done. I'm leaving those strings long to tie it off after, and now I'm gonna do the neck dart. Now the thing about the neck dart is you wanna kind of draw it out at the end. You don't wanna make it an abrupt end because it's not, you know, um, a point that needs a mound in it. You wanna kind of have a nice smooth end, so you really wanna get it thin. Fold it in half, starting it, it's a quarter inch seam at the beginning, but you really wanna go a quarter inch past the cut, but you wanna thin it out at the end just to make a nice uh, flat lay on the front of the dress right there, which you marked with a pen, so that should help you. So you see it kind of really narrows out to the end, leaving the string long so that you can tie that off. That's how the dart looks so far. And then you'll do the second one. Now you can pin this one as well, but it's such a small space, it's easy with this fabric. I really feel like it's not gonna slip. So I started a quarter inch. I look to where I marked the fabric and then I make that thin mark out. And you really wanna make sure these neck darts end up being the same length so that your garment looks nice on the other side. So when you turn it over, kind of get a visual measurement. It looks, it doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna set that piece aside and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the back darts, starting with the base of the dart and also the top of the dart. Fold the uh, pattern piece in half, I'm sorry, the fabric piece. Check the hemline. Again, 
as I already said, you start it nice and narrow, you bring it to a quarter inch at the width of the waist, turn your foot if you need to, and thin it right to the end of the dart. Long strings to tie off, repeat with the other side. Okay, we're cooking with gas now. This is working pretty good. All right, I think we got the idea. Okay. So at this point, I would tie the darts off to make sure that I don't have any pulling as the fabric is going. And then I would also take it to my ironing board and press those darts. Um, because I have to switch camera angles to go to the ironing board, I'm going to finish a portion of the construction first and then iron the garment, even though normally I iron when I go along. After you tie the darts off, uh, a knot at the top and the bottom, you can go ahead and trim those uh, strings a lot closer. Perfect. Now that we have all our knots tied, we're gonna go ahead and sew the front of the dress to the back. Oh, actually, we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is uh, put set the zipper in the back of the dress. So once you have your strings tied off, we're gonna go ahead and sew the center back seam of the dress. Right sides are together, line up the hem. You did mark with a blue pen or with your pen where the end of the zipper is. Now please note that since the zipper is going into the back of the dress, this is a half inch or a five eighths inch seam, not a quarter inch seam. The only one on the pattern that is not that regular uh, quarter inch size. So just be aware of that. Starting at the, the hem edge, just go ahead and sew all the way up into that pin. Good, don't hit the pin. And then back stitch so that you can reinforce there. All right, now we need to take it over to the ironing board so that we can uh, iron that seam open for the zipper insertion. So I've had an opportunity to iron the darts on the front of the dress, uh, the neck and the front, and also iron the darts on the back of the dress, as well as sew the center back seam from the hem to the dot. I reinforced that with the back stitch, as you saw. Now I'm gonna set the zipper. Now, zippers can be pretty intimidating. When I first started using them, not so good at it. Um, but over time with practice, I really have grown to like using them. I think they make a nice finish on the garment and I think they're pretty easy to install once you have a little bit of practice. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a fuchsia colored zipper. So I went ahead and pulled the zipper pull off of this gray zipper and added a fuchsia zipper pull. And if I do a good job installing the zipper, you won't see it and you'll only see the actual colored pull that matches. So I'm using a 12 inch zipper. I'm gonna cut it to size. Uh, it's only gonna take about seven inches. So the way that I like to do it is if you look at the back of the garment and you start the zipper just below where that seam started, um, that's where I like to end it. So I don't wanna do it right to the edge cause I want a little bit of play in case there's any shift in the material. I like to pin the end. Now there's a couple options. You could hand baste this in and then sew it. That way it won't move at all. And you'll feel very confident about the way you set the zipper. Um, I like to just sew it in one side and then pin it up the other side to make sure that I'm uh, getting a good match. So if the material presses well, the zipper installation is easy. If it's uh, something with a lot of stretch to it, I have, a, I have a hard time putting zippers in things that are stretchy. So I'm just gonna pin it to the top and you'll see that I lined up that pressed edge just so I'm hiding the teeth of the zipper. 
So I like to use a little bit bigger stitch on this and go about an eighth of an inch or maybe a little larger uh, from the edge. The reason I use a, a bigger stitch is two reasons. One, I want to make sure if I make a mistake, I can pull it out and start over. So I just start walking my uh, zipper foot down. I'm sorry, not zipper foot, but my foot down. When I feel confident that uh, it's laying pretty flat, I just go ahead and uh, start to run the machine. There we go. So just take your time. And another option is just to literally walk your sewing machine foot down your zipper. That way, if you're not sure if the material is gonna shift, you have a lot more control over it. If you're comfortable, just go ahead and be careful. Try to line it up in the center. Try not to pull your fabric. Just kind of keep it flat and... Good, so now I'm at the end. At the end, I just turn 90 degree angle. Now this time I wanna make sure, just in case there was any stretching on my part, that I do pin the uh, opposite side of the fabric to the zipper. I wanna make sure that it matches also at the neckline. So I'm just gonna put some couple of pins in place just to make sure that that works out as well as I hope it does. Your goal is to make sure that the zipper isn't showing at all. If it's exactly the same color as the fabric, it gives you a little bit uh, more opportunity to be slightly off in your sewing, which is okay too. Grace won't mind, she's an understanding girl. Okay, so I think that's enough to reinforce it. So I'm at that 90 degree angle. I think my stitch is gonna be about three and a half over to get it to line up with the other side of the um, zipper stitch. So I'm right in the middle of my foot. That's where I feel comfortable. And I'm sort of just pushing the fabric down towards the zipper as I go. I don't wanna run over the pins in this case. If you start to feel like the fabric's pulling away, you know, take the time to reset it, repin it, and do it again. I have pulled out plenty of zippers. In this case, I think we're gonna make it though. So let's see what we got. I think it looks pretty good. So if we go ahead and press that, I don't think you're gonna see that that's a gray zipper instead of a fuchsia zipper and we're good to go. So now that we finished the installation of the zipper, I want to go ahead and sew the front of the dress to the back at the shoulder seam. But the first thing I want to do is just pull the zipper, pull down, and even up or cut the zipper at the top. Never cut the zipper uh, with a pull at the top or you'll never be able to get it back on. So you want to make sure you pull it all the way down. That's going to line up just perfectly right there. Now we're going to pin the front to the back. And I actually can trim these seams before we go. Trim these extra threads since we already tied them off. So another method of doing that, of course, is to backstitch at the top. Sometimes that creates a little bit of a bulk or sometimes even a puck, pucker, depending on the um, weight of the fabric. But in this case, we're just gonna trim it since we've already protected the seam by tying that knot. Okay, so you're gonna pin the front of the dress to the back at the side seam right here, our shoulder seam. It's a very small seam, so it shouldn't require too much uh, pinning, but just make sure you line it up nice. Now it is a rounded seam, so you want to make sure that it, you do a rounded edge because this is actually like coming down as a funnel from Grace's neck. Don't hit your pin. those edges. 
And I like to go ahead and clip it right now while I'm working with it. And I'm going to press that open in just a second. Get to the other side. If you're lucky enough to have that sewing machine that stops with your needle in the upright position all the time, I envy you, but I love my FAF 130, so I, I'm not willing to give it up for that luxury quite yet. Maybe one day I will. Always be careful around the pins. And go ahead and clip that curve. Now I'm just going to take it off camera for a second and press that seam. Okay. Now that we have that shoulder seam pressed, we're actually gonna go ahead and put in the sleeves for the dress. The way we're gonna do that is you're gonna turn up the cuff edge of the sleeve a quarter inch and press, which I already did. Then you're gonna just run a little bit of a base stitch or a gather stitch at the top. So you're gonna make that stitch length a little bit longer. It doesn't have to be very long, but there are um, dots indicated on the pattern to show you where to sew. It's about one eighth inch from uh, the edge. And this isn't to create gathers in the, the sleeve cap. It's actually just to ease the sleeve in as you're going around the corner. Just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna do that on both sleeve caps. Okay, perfect. So once I have that done, I'm gonna just gently pull one of these strings. Now, it does look like it's gonna create a gather, but it's not. It's actually just gonna create the rounded top of the sleeve. So I'm gonna do it on both just to make it easy. Okay, so it kind of creates a little bit of a shoulder in the sleeve. Now, we're gonna open up the dress, turn it right side out, and, and there's no right or um, front or back to this sleeve. So starting at either edge is fine. You're just gonna put it right here. Now, some people like to pin it all the way in. I think that that's a little bit hard and it's just from experience that I know that about the middle is gonna meet that middle seam right there. Um, so that's, I'm gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna do quarter inch seam just like I have been the whole time making sure my thread doesn't leave me. And this seam is gonna be pressed open, so you wanna make sure that it doesn't buckle under at the shoulder. So as you're going, you just kind of wanna uh, turn the material and pull the seam over to the edge as you go. Again, this is my method, there are other methods. I am not trying to create a gather in the sleeve, I'm just easing the sleeve over the cap. So you just want to keep meeting the edges together. And you have to remember, you know, that you're not in a hurry. You have all the time in the world to create the outfit that you want for Grace. So, you know, there's no race, you know, it's just going to be however long it takes you to make it exactly as you want it is the right amount of time. I'm just try not to run over my, my own threads there. If you keep turning the sleeve to the dress, you'll see that they line up perfectly. So it didn't require any gathers in order for it to fit there, but that gather or that gentle pulling to make that sleeve cap ease was a lot better. Good. So once I'm done, I just look at it the underside to make sure I haven't been too confident that I didn't create any gathers. Yep, and it looks fine, looks good. Looks good. So before I trim the seam, I'm just gonna put the other uh, sleeve in and then I'm gonna worry about trimming off the excess there on the seam. So we've got our second sleeve here. We're doing it with the folded edge side up. 
we're lining it up with the side of the dress. You're pinning it or not pinning it, depending on how comfortable you feel. And the cap of the sleeve is gonna line up with the shoulder seam of the front and the back of the dress. I'm making sure that that uh, seam that I pressed open at the shoulder stays open and that I don't accidentally sew them all both to one side. Turning as I go. I'm just moving the threads out of the way. And again, you'll notice that the seam, the sleeve is lining up with the edge of the dress. And again, without any gather in the, in the um, sleeve cap. Okay, so just like the other side, you're gonna wanna go ahead and check to make sure that you didn't accidentally make a, a pucker of any kind. So you just check looks pretty decent. Once you know that you feel confident that the sleeve is set the way you want, you can just turn it over and then I'm just gonna clip these um, seams a little bit so it's not quite so bulky. So I'm just gonna cut in towards the seam without cutting it, just to make it round a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna just trim it. I, depending on if the material is a loose weave or a tight weave, I would go maybe an eighth of an inch. If the material tends to fray pretty easily, I'm much more cautious about how I trim the sleeve. So we'll do the other side. Make sure you don't cut into the garment. I've done it. I'm sure we've all done it at least once. So be real careful and then just go ahead and trim. Going to clean the extra stuff off the top of my machine here. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have the front to the back and the sleeves are set in, we've got our darts tied off, we've got our zipper inset. Oh, we're in good shape. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sew the side seam. So, all you're going to do is fold it in half. When you do that, you want to untuck that fold you made in the cuff edge. And you want to line up the side seam because you want those to match. Now I do pin when it comes to this because I don't want the material to stretch as I'm as I'm sewing it and then my seams don't line up. I usually like to take about three pins. Uh, some people prefer more and so whatever you're comfortable with, right? So whether you're an advanced or, or beginning, you just kind of find your own method. All right. So, starting at the cuff edge is what I prefer. Careful of the pin as you go over, or you can pull it out as you sew. It's a quarter inch seam. I'm at the corner. I just wanna make sure the material lines up well as I go down the side of the dress. All right, I think that went fine. Now, some people reinforce the seams at every edge. Um, when I use a smaller stitch length, I don't find that to be necessary for me. If you feel comfortable doing that, please do. I do like to clip the curved edges as I go, and I am gonna come back and I am gonna press that in just a minute, but I'll have to change cameras. So I'm gonna do the other side. Again, unfold the cuff edge and line up that side seam. I hope you guys are enjoying the convention. 
I know it hasn't started, but I'm already excited about thinking about it. So by the time you watch this, it will have started and it's going to be great. So perfect. Okay. So again, starting at that uh, cuff edge of the sleeve, being careful about that pin and lining up those edges pretty well. Okay, again, you're going to clip into the seam on that one, definitely around the curved edges. And then just to make sure we're doing a pretty good job, we're going to try this on our grace and see how it's fitting so far. At this point is when you would want to make adjustments. So if you feel like the darts were not right or the side seams were too small or too large, this is the chance. So go ahead and turn the garment right side out. Now I know it's not pressed, so you're just going for basic fit pushing the sleeves right side out as well. Okay, you can just visually take a look at it without it being pressed, mind you. You know, so far so good. I think it's looking pretty good. And now we're just gonna slip Grace into it. Now, please don't be horrified that she has no hair and that she's a little bit in the buff, but that's only because we want to make sure uh, we get a good fit on her and we don't want to mess her hair up. So you can also take her hands off. I like to sew with no hair and no hands, anything that makes it easier. And if she has a pair of wonder unders on uh, from House of O'Brien, that always helps because it won't get stuck on her sticky buns. Okay, so we got the front on. We're going to give her a zip. Be careful at this stage you don't pull the zipper um, pull off. That would be pretty sad at this point. So you're going to just check, see how it fits. Not too bad in the back. And I think it's looking pretty great in the front. So if you're happy with the fit, then you can go ahead and go on to the next step of finishing up with the lining. So we'll come back to that in just a second. So we left off with Grace having the outside of her dress complete. We just double checked the fit to make sure we were happy. And again, I hadn't pressed it yet, but I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the lining pieces and we are in good steed. All right, so Grace is gonna go to the side right there and we're gonna start with the center front. Again, we mark the um, darts top and bottom using that heat sensitive pen. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with those center darts first. Uh, I fold it right um, in the center, matching the hem, and I carefully put the darts in the front, starting narrow, going to a quarter inch at the uh, waist edge or the waist, and that's how we get started. I did change my thread to white because I want to make sure that the lining looks really nice as well as the external part of the dress careful of those darts and leave the threads long so you can tie them off to make sure that those seams don't pull. Good. I move the pins over to the second front dart. Fold it in half. Measure up that hem. Start nice and narrow as we said. Ooh, right on the pin that time. There we go. Good. Once you have the two front darts finished, you can go ahead and fold it in half to make the neck dart. And again, as we said with the construction of the dress, you can see the dot right there. You're going to start at a quarter inch, but you do want to fade it out and become very thin at the bottom. You don't want to pucker in the front of the dress. So start it at a quarter. 
seeing where that dot where I'm going to finish, I'm going to just kind of make it a little bit thinner than I normally would to draw it out right there. And we're trying to get those to match. Second neck darts going in. Now again, feel free to use as many pins as you think is necessary to make you feel comfortable that the material is not gonna slip. Lining is obviously a little bit slippier, more slippery than the wool. So whatever works best for you. Starting at the quarter inch, checking the dot at the bottom and fading out. When I say fading out, I mean, you wanna make it not quarter inch all the way to the dot. You wanna make it nice and thin at the dot. Good. Just go ahead and check that. See if those um, neck darts seem to line up, which I think they look pretty good. You can see where the dots are right there. Set that to the side. You're gonna repeat the same process with the back darts, top and bottom. Not with that pin, I guess. <laughs> Fold it in half, line up the hem. Careful of the pin. Again, leave those strings long so that you can go ahead and tie those off to make the darts nice and secure when you create your outfit. Go into the second side. Okay, so on this one, it appears that my heat sensitive transfer pin decided to fade out. So I'm just gonna bring it back. So that I make sure that I place that dart correctly. Okay, good. So the next step in the process is gonna to be to sew that center back seam um, where you stop so that where the zipper is. Uh, you're gonna place the two pieces together. And if I were doing this just by myself, uh, I would already uh, have pressed the item. So give me just a second to press it and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with the lining of the dress. The only thing I did when you didn't see me was I sewed the center back seam from the hem into the dot and then I reinforced it with a back stitch. Then I pressed it open. I pressed the back of the dress. I pressed the front of the dress and I also pressed just the hem edge or the cuff edge of the sleeves up just to save a little bit of time. So now I'm going to pin the front to the back right sides together and I'm going to sew that shoulder seam on each side. Now remember to be really careful of those pins. Like I said, if you're gonna pin it, you can pull the pin out as you sew, or if you're not comfortable with that, you can just go and walk uh, the foot over the pin and that will keep you from breaking your needle, hopefully. Got one side done. Trim those seams and let's sew the other side. Didn't get it quite pinned.
it is good to replace your pins every once in a while. Um, sometimes you'll get some with burrs in them or they just don't go into the fabric very easily. It's just easier to throw them away than to keep putting them back on the same pin cushion and keep trying to use them into your projects. Once you get the second shoulder seam sewn, you can take that pin out. And just like we did on the dress, you can clip the seam because you're gonna to need to press this open. Just clip in towards the seam. And I'm gonna just quickly press that. Okay, good. Now, just like we did with the exterior part of the dress, we're just gonna go ahead and do the lining where we do a little gather or a, just a little base stitch across the sleeve cap. And it is marked on the pattern, but it's just a really a small area. Increase your stitch length, go one eighth of an inch from the edge. And again, as a reminder, this is just to ease the sleeve into the dress. It's not to create act an actual gather. So you just don't, it's hard to go around the corner. So you wanna make sure you have it a little bit eased. All right, once you got those two in, you can just pull gently. So you're not, like I said, not trying to create a gather. You're just trying to create sort of the round area that would be a shoulder. I'm gonna do it on both sleeves at the same time pull one of the two threads and don't let it buckle too much. So I just kind of make it soft. Perfect. Okay. Then we're going to take it and open up the dress so that we have right sides, uh, the right side out. And again, remember I told you there's no front or back to this particular sleeve on this dress. So you're just going to start edge to edge here. And if you feel more comfortable, go ahead and pin it all the way in. Or if you feel quite confident, you can just walk it. So again, your sleeve, uh, I'm sorry, your stitch length is about uh, two and a half to three, quarter inch seam, and just start. Skip the pin, rotate the sleeve as you go along, making sure that that pressed seam open at the shoulder seam remains that way as you inset the sleeve. And you will recall that if from earlier, that if you do it just right, you should end up with no pucker and the sleeve should match correctly to the garment. We'll check, looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put the other side in. You already have pulled a little gently to make that sleeve ease right sides together, pin it to the dress. And start to sew. Make sure that uh, shoulder seam remains open as you sew the sleeve, the sleeve in place.
Okay, so we have both of our sleeves set in, which is great. And now we're just gonna take that clip into the seam like we did with the uh, exterior part of the garment before we trim the seam. Again, check, make sure that you don't have any weird uh, puckers or any tucks that you didn't anticipate. If not, then go ahead and trim it. For the lining, about an eighth an inch of an inch from that seam allowance seems good. We are in pretty good shape right here. All right, once you finish this side, you're gonna go ahead and turn the garment right side to right side and sew the side seams together. Checking our seams looks good. Perfect. So you're gonna go sleeve to sleeve, just like we did with the exterior portion of the dress. You're gonna match that side seam, same. So everything is the same. Once you master the exterior, you've actually got the interior, which is great. All the way down to the hem. Now the lining material is a little bit more slippery than the wool, as we already discussed. So just go ahead and use an extra few pins so that you feel confident that you're gonna be lining it up. Started in it at, at the cuff edge is what I like. Make sure you have enough thread to get started. All right, perfect. Again, you can um, just clip in towards that seam on the curved side of that side seam so that you can come back in a few minutes and go ahead and press that open. Let's do the other side seam now. Remember to match the underarm seam, that's really important. Now, some people pin from the inside of the garment out towards the seam, but I wasn't trained to do it that way by my grandma or my mother. So this is the method that I use. If you feel more comfortable with your pins going from the inside of the garment to the outside seam, then by all means, right? I mean, you gotta find what literally works for you in order to find success and happiness with your sewing projects. So. And that's what it's about, right? Each person has their own method, but we all end up with something cool. So, We are making some really good progress so far. I'm gonna stop the video right now and make sure that I've pressed everything open and we're gonna get ready to go ahead and uh, sew the lining to the dress. Be right back. We're almost to the final steps. I have pressed the garment again using my sewing hams. I've pressed the lining fairly well also with my sewing hams. And now I'm just gonna sew the collar together, uh, right sides together. And then we're gonna go ahead and hand hem the dress and the lining. So I'm gonna use it with the lining turned inside out and the dress turned right side out. Just slipping it inside, making sure to tuck the sleeves in as well. Now, when you're doing a zipper, I'm sure there's a lot of ways, and I've tried a lot of ways. Um, you might have your own way. I like to line it up so it's almost exactly perfect with the edge of the dress fabric. 
Now I don't want to cut that seam uh, too close when I go because it makes it hard to uh, have a nice clean finished edge, but I'm going to just pin it. This is definitely where you want to pin. And I'm going to press the seams open as I go around the neckline. And I do want to make sure that the other side of the zipper tape lines up exactly the same. So it's almost right to the edge of the fabric, if you can see it right there. I prefer to tuck the top, you know, a little bit more than a eighth of an inch of the zipper inside when I sew the lining to the zipper tape. Um, and you might find that to be useful as well. So with those seams all pinned together, I start with my uh, back stitch because I want to reinforce over the zipper teeth so that the zipper pull doesn't come off. So I'm just going to carefully walk it backwards. And I like to, you know, this is my method. So your method might be different, but then I go forward a little bit and then I feel good about it. So I go back a little bit and I'm using that quarter inch seam and then I go all the way around. Now I'm being really careful not to hit the pins, obviously. I don't want any puckers or any gaps. I want it to be nice and smooth. Around the neckline. When I get to the opposite side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go over the zipper teeth, then I'm gonna back it up. Now in this case, I have a pin there, so I'm gonna pull it out, back it up, and then I'm gonna walk it forward just a little bit, and then I'm gonna back it up again. Now hopefully, that was exactly as I wanted it to be, and we'll see right here. So before I cut anything, before I cut the neck or trim that seam, I want to make sure that the zipper is matching up uh, on the dress when I zip it up. So before I do anything, I'm going to pull it out and just check. So you don't really have to do too much. Tuck the lining inside. You can see that you're going to press this so that there's going to be uh, a little bit of an edge hiding the lining. But just for grins, let's go ahead and see if we did a good job. Get the strings out of the way, pull the zipper tape up, up, up. Don't catch it on any of these extra threads. And you'll see that it lines up perfect. So I think we did an excellent job right there. So now that I know it's good, I'm gonna pull that lining back out and then I'm gonna trim that seam. Now first I'm gonna clip it just like you do with most curved edges. But when I get to the actual edge where the zipper is, I'm not gonna cut it super short because it's hard then, because the zipper's rigid, to tuck it in. So I'm going to keep it kind of long, maybe even to that quarter inch length. And then I'm going to cut in and trim the seam to a, a one eighth inch towards the center and then back out more towards that quarter inch seam, okay, on each side. All right, so now I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to trim the extra threads. And I'm going to be right back after I press this. Okay, so now that we have the neck edge sewn, I want to make sure that I get that nice and pressed and that everything looks right to me before I actually go through the hemming process. So I'm going to push the lining into the dress and I'm going to try to press it so that it's at least 1 16th inch about, about into the dress right? So that the white lining doesn't show through. Now you have to be really a little bit careful because you don't want to burn the poly lining if that's what you're using. If your iron's set at anything higher than maybe a four, uh, you have a tendency to uh, shrink or burn the lining. So just be careful, you know, just go in, pull the lining in so you can see a little bit of the material of the dress on the outside and go all the way around the collar. I can hear Grace in the background and she's saying, when, are you, when am I going to be done? When am I going to be done? But I'm telling her I'm working on it as fast as I can, right? Okay, so hopefully you can see this, what I'm trying to accomplish, right? Good. 
So once you feel confident that you've done it pretty good, pressed it pretty well, you could top stitch this if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do it for this garment, but you could. Okay, then when everything's tucked inside, just as a double check, I'm going to just zip that zipper up one more time and see if I feel like it's going to end well. And I really think it does right there. So I think we're in good shape. Now, we're almost done. So really what we need to do is turn the hem edge up on the dress. We need to turn the hem edge under on the lining and then hand sew it together. And then we also need to finish the sleeves in that same way. So I think it's going to be easiest for me if I turn it all the way out. It's just easier. Now I'm going to turn the hem edge of the dress up one quarter inch all the way around and just give it a nice hard press so I have a nice crisp hem edge. And you could do it a couple ways. You could do it over a sewing hem if you feel like that that would work the best. And I think that's what I might do right here. I knew I could use this larger sewing hem. It's just about the right size. So I'm looking for about a quarter inch turn up on the hem edge. Get a nice crisp edge and press those seams open as you go around the corner, but you don't want to pull them open, so be careful. Try to make the hem nice and even all the way around. And the sewing hem really does make it easy. So once you have it, you can give it one final press on the flat surface of your board. Good. So you know the external part of the garment is going to be hemmed properly. You do the same thing with the lining of the garment. So you're going to turn it up as well. Uh, maybe just a little bit higher than that. You don't want it to show out the bottom, which is really important. You again could use the ham here, or if you feel comfortable, you could just do it without. Um, you're looking for just a little bit more of an upturn than you did on the actual dress. That's just to make sure that the lining doesn't show at the hemline. Okay, so we're going to turn the dress right side out. We're going to turn the lining to the inside of the dress. And then you're going to turn all of that wrong side out. There you go. Okay, so you're going to line up the seams, uh, the center back seam where the zipper is to the center back seam of the lining. And I think pinning at this point is a great idea, right? And if you need to pre repress anything, you want to do it now, right? This is the finish, so you want to make sure it's as nice as you need it to be. So you want it to be at least uh, maybe an eighth of an inch up from the hem edge. Again, you're matching those uh, side seams and the center back seam for the hem. Okay, once you've got that pinned and you feel comfortable about the way it is, you're going to go ahead and grab yourself a needle and thread. Um, I would use a white to, or whatever color to match the lining just to make sure that you don't pull through the front of the garment though so that it's not seen. And we'll be right back with you. Thank you. Okay, so I went ahead and finished sewing the lining uh, and to the zipper tape, and so this is how it worked out. I think it looks pretty good. I finished sewing the sleeve lining to the inside of the hem, and now I'm just going to turn it right side out, give it a nice steam, and check to see 
how Grace likes the fit so far. I'm also checking to see that I didn't run any of those strings through to the outside because I want to make sure they're not seen on the outside of the garment. So I'll give it a little turn. Checking the hem, I think things look pretty good. Checking the zip. And again, I used that gray zipper, but I think it turned out all right. Matches pretty nicely at the top, and I did change the zipper pull to match the dress. So, let's see. We can get just one final crisp hem on there. Uh, steam. Love this ham. Let's give it a try. Now, as Rachel has told us in a lot of videos, you can pull the hands off if you want to easily put them through the dress, uh, but the hands will fit through the dress design. Give her a zip. Let's give her her hands back. I think she looks great. So I hope this part's going good for you so far and we're gonna move on to the jacket. Now that we have the dress constructed for Grace, we're going to go ahead and put her to the side and finish the jacket. Let's quickly review the pieces that are included in the jacket. So we're working with uh, front and back of the sleeve, the uh, jacket back, and the facing cut out of the same material for the collar slash front. And then the pieces are the same for the actual outer jacket. Uh, the first step in the pattern uh, is really critical to the construction. Uh, it's not a difficult jacket, but there's just a couple of steps that are tricky to read, and I think it will be helpful to see it. So if you take your jacket front and front facing piece, you'll notice that the inner corner right here that forms the collar has a really dark line right there. What you're going to do is sew a reinforcement stitch. It's just a quarter inch seam also from the inside of that edge, um, but you're just going to sew it, you know, uh, just it's about a, uh, maybe a half inch up and a half inch over. Uh, you just want to make sure that this seam doesn't pull. The second thing you're going to do after you finish that is you're going to cut from that inner corner to the dot on the pattern without cutting the seam. So just to make it a little bit easier, I already did it on one set of the collar pieces and I want to just make sure you can see it. Here's the seam here for reinforcement. I'm cutting right into that corner just shy of hitting that seam. So that's what it's going to look like. You're going to do that on both pieces, actually all four including the facing pieces, and the next step is just going to be to sew that center back seam together. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so we have those two uh, collar slash front pieces and we're just gonna put them together, right sides together. I wanna make sure, here we go, right sides together. And you can go ahead like with the other construction, uh, pin this if that makes you more comfortable or if the material isn't slippery, you can go ahead and sew it without. 
we're going to use that quarter inch seam. And again, the stitch length is set to two and a half to three. So that's going to be our center back seam. I'm going to press that open. Now the next step in the construction is that you're going to pin uh, the collar and front section to the jacket back at the side seams. And this is a little bit tricky for your mind, <laughs> but I want to show you the best I can. So here's your back and here's your front. And this is the wrong side and this is the right side. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm uh, sewing the right side of the jacket to the right side of the back. So it's actually gonna look like this. Now, that might look a little crazy, but if you look, the seam is to the, this is the right side of the jacket, this is the right, uh, right side of the jacket back. So you're gonna turn that just like that. So we're gonna go over that in just a, in the other uh, image so that you can see it from both directions. Okay. So we're bringing our piece over to the sewing machine and we have already pinned those right sides together. Let's go ahead and sew those up. actually put the pins on the back side to demonstrate so I'm just going to take them off. Um, this is the second side seam. I'm going to press those two side seams open and start construction of the sleeves. Okay, so I have my sleeve back and my sleeve front. I'm gonna match those up with the right sides together. I like to sew the sleeve starting at the cuff edge. Uh, that just makes it go easily around that angle at the top. And again, you're gonna pin it if you feel like that's necessary or if you're more comfortable with the fabric, you can go ahead and sew it without pinning it. I'm sewing the top of the sleeve or the over sleeve edge. I'm gonna repeat that with the second piece. Okay, now at this stage, I want to clip this seam because I want to press this open. It's very hard to press it after, so I'm just going to clip a little bit in towards that seam on the curved edge on both pieces. And then I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and I'm going to uh, iron the seam open and I'm also going to turn this cuff edge up a quarter inch and hard press it. So I'm going to do that and come back, then we'll sew the underarm seam. So I took the sleeves over to the ironing board. I just pressed that seam open, which is the overarm seam. And then I turned the sleeve edge up a quarter inch and hard pressed it. And now I'm just going to sew the underarm seam. So I untuck that press because I want to make sure I can press it back up. 
starting at the hem edge, I just sew from the hem to the armhole edge. And again, pinning it if you feel like it. And doing the second one, same thing. Okay, now that we have the, seam, the uh, sleeves assembled, we're gonna go ahead and press that underarm seam open and then we're gonna pin it actually to the jacket and we're getting close. So we have the underarm and the overarm seam of the sleeve sewn. I'm just gonna press it quickly with this sewing hand, which I completely love. Um, just slip it right into the sleeve Give it a little bit of a press. This makes it easier later, I think. Nice, nice. Good. Once you have your sleeves, sleeves constructed, all you're gonna do is turn them right side out. So this is the next process. Once you have them right side out, you wanna make sure you know which is the back and which is the front. So since they're uh, separate now, the one that's just a little bit longer or a little bit wider is the back. And the back is gonna to go to the back of the jacket. So here's our jacket piece. What we're gonna do is just turn it so we're dealing with one side and I'm gonna work with the sleeve that has the back on this side. So uh, when you look at it this way, the thicker one or the longer one is this one. So I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna line up the underarm seam with the side seam, right sides together. And this time I will pin, I recommend it for this. You wanna make sure you get these stitches exactly right. Now that back is gonna actually pin exactly to the length of that inner sleeve. <clears throat> so as you go around, you can see it's gonna line up just right. There's a little bit of curve there, so be careful when you're pinning. Now the tricky part here is remember we cut that uh, notch into the corner of the inner collar. So that's gonna actually line up with the front part of the sleeve. So we're gonna start rotating it around. And you see the notch in the collar is right there. So your sleeve is actually gonna extend past that notch. You can see, it's very hard to see, but there's a cut right there. There's a little tiny triangle where we made that um, cut into the corner and that's the top of the sleeve. We're gonna stop our stitch one quarter inch from this edge. So when you see that um, reinforcement stitch, you're gonna remember one quarter inch from the top edge of the sleeve is where you're gonna stop because that's where we want the collar to pivot at the top of the raglan sleeve. So I'm just gonna do one side at a time so you can kind of um, Get the information twice just to make sure. So again, you've pinned the sleeve with the wider sleeve to the back, which is the back sleeve. That matches up correctly to uh, the collar so that uh, the back piece and the sleeve line up together. Then on the front, they also line up, but you're going to see that the uh, front sleeve is going past that notch a little bit. So you want to stop one quarter inch from the edge when you sew it in. So we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and see how that works out. Okay, so I've brought the jacket piece over to the sewing machine. And like I said, we've just done one side. I'm gonna start the stitching on the back sleeve. So that's gonna start directly at the top where they go together. Just 
Just be careful if you did pin it well that you're uh, not running the pins over with your needle. You can either go slow at that area or you can actually walk it. So you're sort of just making sure you're not catching any of the other pieces. And you're sewing in a horseshoe sort of shape from one side of the sleeve to the other. Make sure when you go across the side seam that that remains pressed open. That will make your garment lie a lot better. So just kind of turn it as you go. Watch that seam. I know it's not the easiest thing to see without a bird's eye view, but I'm just sewing almost in the round, except for it's not an enclosed circle. Okay, now I'm coming up the front of the sleeve now. And this is the part where you just wanna be careful. So I'm gonna pull my hands back so you can see. I'm coming right up the front of the top of the sleeve here. Now, I'm getting to the territory where I see that reinforced seam and I also see the top of the sleeve. So this is the top of the front sleeve and I'm just gonna stop it one quarter inch from that edge. I'm just gonna do a little back stitching here just to reinforce it. And then I'm gonna check to make sure I didn't create any puckers or unusual things in the front. So take the pins out and turn the garment. When you turn it, you should see that the sleeve uh, under our arm of this, the seam of the sleeve lines up with that side seam of the jacket. Now this is up the front and you'll see we have a little bit of an opening there. That's where we left the quarter inch. And this is the back and it goes flush to the side. So we're gonna pin it and do the other side as well. I will be right back with that. Okay, so we're back at the ironing board and we're gonna go ahead and pin in that second sleeve. Um, we're going to do it exactly as we did on the other side. You're going to have the inside of the garment up, facing up, and you're going to match that underarm seam of the sleeve to the side seam of the garment. The first pin should go there, so you make sure that those seams match up. Then we're going to walk the back of the jacket up the back of the sleeve. And again, remember, this one's going to line up exactly with the top. So there's not gonna be a gap and there's not gonna be any reinforcement seam on this side. So we're lining it all the way up. Just kind of roll it with your fingers and pin it in place. Okay, so that leaves just the front of the sleeve to the collar. So we're gonna roll it around, pin it. Now remember, this is the side with the reinforced seam. So you see the top of the sleeve here you see the notch that we created. You'll see a small triangle left of the, the sleeve showing from that notch. So you're gonna pin that carefully together. All right, so all we have to do then is sew from the back to the front and leave that quarter inch um, space between the top of the sleeve and the corner of that collar. So we'll take it over to the sewing machine. Okay, we're back at the sewing machine and we're gonna sew in that second sleeve. Now on this side, we're starting with the front of the sleeve. So that is where that reinforcement is here. And that is where you're gonna start a quarter inch from the top of the sleeve. So I'm just gonna make sure I push the collar out of the way so I don't catch it. I'm gonna set my needle so that it hits a quarter inch from that top and start. Okay, here we are back at the sewing machine. We're gonna go ahead and sew the lining to the jacket. I'm gonna start just inside this first pin right here. I'm gonna start going forward. And as I said before, I'm also gonna take a few back stitches because I don't want the opening to pull open as I'm turning the garment outside, right side out. All right, so just take your time. Use your fingers to feel that those sleeves aren't coming into your stitch. Uh, pattern.
All right, we're almost to the center back of the jacket where we started. I'm gonna leave that opening just in front of this pin right here. I'm gonna back it up a few stitches to save that edge. And we're gonna take it over to the ironing board and that's where we're actually gonna finish it. So let's see how it turned out. We have our jacket back over at the ironing board. We've just sewn the lining to the actual jacket. I'm gonna take the pins away. Now, there's a couple of ways you can turn it. Um, if you have any doubt that you've caught something in it, you definitely don't wanna trim anything until you actually make sure that you made it all the way around without catching a sleeve or anything. So one way to do it is just to feel, I can tell that I didn't uh, catch a sleeve. So I feel pretty confident about that. I'm just gonna go ahead and clip these corners in towards the seam but not at the seam and I am going to trim this uh, seam down a little bit. This is a pretty tight weave as far as the wool and uh, I feel pretty confident that it won't pull and I want to decrease the amount of bulk before I turn it. All right, one thing I never do is trim too close to this opening because I want to be able to tuck that edge in and I don't want to make it so uh, thin that I can't tuck it in easily. So I'm just going to give it a quick clean up around this corner. All right, I think that's pretty good. So now I'm just gonna reach inside. I usually find that it's easiest if you find a sleeve. You start to pull the sleeve out. Now you don't have to be in a hurry. Just take your time and be gentle. Kind of work it out of that hole. All right, so let's kind of find the edge here. I kind of like to roll it between my fingers just to see where the seam is. Great. And when you feel a little bit comfortable with how you're getting that edge, you can go ahead and start to press it. Um, one thing that's helpful is if you push the sleeve linings through the sleeve, starting to look more like a jacket all the time. Okay. So I'm just going to carefully press around the full exterior. And I want it to be nice and round. So I don't want any bumps or lumps if I can avoid it.
when I iron near the lining, I usually try to make sure there's just a really like one thirty second of an inch there um, so that the lining doesn't show on the outside of the garment. And that is our opening. So what you're going to want to do is just tuck the lining in and then tuck the jacket in. Make a nice clean edge. And then we're going to just um, hand stitch that closed. So I'm going to get a needle and thread and I'm just going to uh, stitch this opening closed and I'll be right back. Okay, well I have my needle and my thread. I've already tied the knot in it and I am using uh, just a single thread uh, versus double. I like to just do as I showed you with the dress catch it under the lining and then just very carefully picking only the turned up edge of the jacket just go ahead and do a quick hand finish I find that if I use a really long thread, um, it usually ends up uh, becoming difficult. Uh, it winds up and it gets kind of knotted up as you go. So it's better to just use a shorter thread and thread your needle again. I mean, I think that's why I use the long one is I try to avoid having to keep finding the needle eye, but it makes it a little bit less complicated if you use a shorter thread. Okay, we made it to the other side of the opening. I think it, we did a pretty good job. Again, I'm gonna just tie it off in a knot and then I'm just gonna run it through one more time just so that I make sure that that knot stays secure. And clip it. Okay, so that's our finished edge. Give that a little bit of a press. See how it looks on the back. No seams came through, so that's good. Now, I push the sleeves into the lining. That's the easiest way, I think. And once I do that, we have those creases that we created when we press the sleeve, which is very helpful. So I wanna make sure that underarm seam is open before I turn. So you can see that we already did that. Now you'll recall that on the lining, we pressed it um, up just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch uh, so that it doesn't show at the sleeve cuff edge. Get that all tucked in. So it's a nice smooth edge. You do the same thing on the other side. So if you pull the lining away and then tuck it in, it seems to be a little bit easier. That way it can expose to that side seam because you want to press that open.
Just tuck that seam in. Okay, perfect. So you're going to take that needle and thread again, and you're just going to do the same thing you did at the jacket back opening. And I'm going to come back right after I sew this seam right here. We're almost to the finish line, so I'm pretty excited about that. We made it so far so good. So um, here we have it. I finished the sleeve lining to the sleeve cuffs here on both sides. We already know that I finished the opening where we turned the jacket. Now we're just going to turn it right side out. See if there's any corrections or anything that we see needs to be made. Make sure we didn't make any of the lining, sewing exposed to the outside of the jacket. All right. So I think actually that turned out pretty darn good. Okay, so let's just give it kind of a quick light press and then we'll try it on Grace and see where we want to position the snaps for the closure. So I'm going to use my tiny ham, I love that ham, to get through on the sleeve here. I love the color. I think it is a really beautiful shade of dark pink or fuchsia. All right, let's see what Grace thinks, y'all. Now remember, she's gonna look a lot better when we give her some shoes and also a wig to match this great ensemble. So you're gonna pull the jacket up on her now this is where you might decide you need to um, press the, the um, jacket edge a little bit better, but hopefully you can see. The way the collar works is it folds down, and then you have the option to either cross it over, as in an overlap, or if you wanted to, you could place the snap under, and that kind of creates uh, a nice edge on it. So hopefully you can see this. I'm trying not to get my hands in, though, in the way. So I think she's going to be great. So what I'm going to do is, um, because I can visually see it, I'm just going to put a pin where I might want to mark for that snap, the over snap, and then I'm going to put a pin where I want to mark for the under snap. And I'm just going to sew those on really quick, and then we're going to get a final fitting, add a little bit of hair, a little bit of shoes, and we'll see what we turned out with.